Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Brandon um, and this is gonna be part one, I guess the first video in my Disney Cultural Exchange Program journey. Um, if you're new to our channel, um, I share this channel with my fiance Heidi and we document all of our adventures, all of our trips, we do pins, hauls, vlogs, unboxings, live streams, all that fun stuff. And now we're adding Disney Cultural Exchange Program content to our channel because that is the journey that I am on and the journey that I hopefully will continue to be on. Um, so if you're just joining us, welcome. And if you've been here for a while, thank you so much. And I appreciate you watching this and sticking with me through this journey. So this video today is going to be the whole interview process um, from finding out that I got an email for an interview and filling out the role checklist all the way to talking about all of the interview questions and laying that all out for you, as well as vlogging part of the interview day. So let's get into all of that fun stuff right now. Oh Are you so happy? Ah! <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Alrighty, so I'm just uh, sitting here like a little bit sort of in shock. Um, myself and Heidi were setting up this new like espresso machine that we got um, and then we took a break and I grabbed my phone and I saw like an email from Disney and it said, uh, Disney International Programs complete your role checklist. And I had like a mini freak out for a second and then I had to sit down and I read the email. So I'm gonna show you the email, Heidi freaked out too. So I'm gonna show you this email. Uh, the one that I got uh, that I just like freaked out about. So this is what I saw when I opened my email. Disney International Programs, complete your role checklist with this cool little picture with the Disney International Programs. So here is the email, it says, Dear Brandon, thank you for your interest in the Disney International Programs in preparation for your interview. Oh my goodness, please click the link below to complete your role checklist. This is your opportunity to indicate which roles interest you so we can discuss them during the interview. So basically, I have to click on this link and then once I do that, it'll give me all of the roles that I can choose from. Um, so I'm gonna take you through that because I think that'll be fun just to show you what kind of roles interest me, uh, what different roles there are, um, and you can see kind of where I ranked uh, some different things. So this is all just so crazy. I can't believe it because I was like waiting for this email. Uh, nobody knew when it was gonna happen and it's finally here. So I'm excited to do this role checklist. Um, yeah. It's just gonna be so cool to like keep on kind of progressing through this whole process. All right, we're back. I changed my outfit. I put a spirit jersey on because it feels only fitting that I would do this Disney World checklist with a spirit jersey on. So I'm recording the screen um, as I'm doing it. So I'm gonna put that right here. So you'll see that, you'll see me, and you'll kind of see what I see as I do this as much as I can show about it. Um, but basically here's the email. And you can see right here, it says click here for the IP role checklist cultural exchange. So we'll click on that and you'll see that it pops up here. So I'm going to do this whole thing here. I'll just scroll through some of it and then I'll show you all of the different roles that they offer. All right. So here we are here and it has the roles um, and they're kind of all down as we go. Um, so you can see there's the role title right here. So quick service food and beverage and then it has like a description. So you can see kind of what you'll be doing. Um, there should be videos here, but it says video unavailable. So maybe it was a video talking about the role and kind of what you could be doing. So, and then there's the bar down here. It says, please indicate your level of interest in, and then it'll have each role. So for example, this one being quick service, food and beverage. So I have to kind of think about how that I want to do these. Obviously it's a little bit difficult to know kind of uh, where you want to rank things. So I'm just going to scroll down and go to the ones that I know that I for sure have high interest in. So for example, attractions is one that I would love to do. I think it'd be so fun to do attractions. I would love to um, like be placed really anywhere. I think there'd be so many cool attractions that you could do. Um, so I'm gonna put this one, I think, as high interest for attractions, because that would be so fun if I could be in attractions. Um, custodial is one that I'm gonna put low interest for. Um, it's not like the worst, a job in the world and I've heard lots of people actually really um, enjoy doing custodial but I just think for me I don't really know if all of this stuff will be as like height accommodating for me because I'm very tall so maybe the stuff to push around won't be the best so I'm just trying to think of myself character performer um, is one that I don't think I'd be able to do I know that I'm too tall for those so I'm either gonna put low or no interest for that one but we'll come back to it because I don't really know 
uh, what I should put because I don't want to like limit everything but I, I know definitely that I would be too tall for most things. Housekeeping I'm going to put no interest just because for me um, like going under beds and cleaning stuff and stuff that are low would be hard for me because I am very tall. I'm six foot ten for those who don't know that are watching this for the first time. So as I talk about that I'm too tall to do things and you're like really I'm like I really am. So housekeeping here is my number one choice and it is character attendant. So I'm going to put this high interest. I think I would love to do this. I think it'd be so fun. Um, you can see like the role description here, provide guests with information about shows and character locations, um, like audience control and stuff and making sure that people like are lined up or staying out of the way for different things. Um, the safety of the performer and the guest, all that kind of stuff. I just think that I would be good at. I also think that I'm pretty knowledgeable at a lot of different characters and I think that's part of it here as you can say um, like interacting with our guests by involving them in the character story. I think that's something that I'd be good at um, and I love to meet characters. Those who have seen our vlogs, meeting characters is a highlight for me um, so I know for sure that would be something that I would absolutely love to do. Um, recreation attractions um, this is one I think that I have lots of experience in, um, like if it's what I'm thinking it is, but basically it's like working with kids at the resort, um, like, or different groups and activities. So here, like it kind of describes it more so like you're supporting like the lifeguards, like there's a picture of people putting life jackets on. So I'm going to put that one, I guess, moderate interest because it looks like a lot of water stuff. And I feel like I'm not the best at water things. So after reading this a description one more time, I'm gonna put this moderate. I thought that it was a different role. So I feel like I'll maybe ask about it in the interview because to me, it seems like a lot of water things and like you have to have good uh, swimming skills. I thought it was stuff like the movie Under the Stars and the like campfire and things at a resort. So maybe I was wrong. Um, a cedar. I think that I wouldn't be like terrible at that. I think that I would do good at that. So I'm going to put that though. I think, um, maybe low interest. I don't want to put no interest for really anything for lifeguard. I'm going to put no interest because I am not a lifeguard and I can't swim very, very well. And for merchandise, I'm going to put high interest because I know that I would love that. I think it'd be cool. You can do pin trading and you'd be in different stores. I think that could be cool. Um, and I just think that that'd be a fun thing. So right now, oh, and then I forgot this one, quick service food and beverage. I'm going to put that as well, low interest. Um, there's nothing in terms of like full service food and beverage, which I know that there had been in the past. Um, and then Cedar and the uh, recreation attractions. I'm going to put moderate for both of those. I think that a Cedar could be good as well. It's, it's a lot of guest interaction. And I feel like that I would like that as well. So I have my top three that are for sure far and away and then kind of other things falling in between. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to submit this. So it's the next day, same spirit jersey, different hat, but it is um, 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm actually currently on a class on Zoom and I got an email about an interview, um, which I'll show you, but it's not correct. And I only know that because I checked like the dashboard and it says that it's for New Zealand. So I think there's some sort of tech issue, but I'll show you the email so you can see what, uh, what it looks like. But they are um, in-person interviews, which is really, really cool. And I'm excited about it being in-person. So here it is. You can see there it has the link to click to schedule my interview. But then when I click on that, it pops up like this and says that it's like full and they're going to add more spots. So hopefully that's all figured out soon. I'm not going to email anybody. I know some people have been like emailing support. I'm just going to wait and see what happens because I'm sure that they know that it's a problem. Um, and hopefully we'll get like another email soon with the actual Canadian pr uh, presentation slash interview dates. Um, and I'll keep you updated on that as well. All right. So things are changing like very quickly, which I knew that it would happen because there's no way that they, like intentionally sent out the New Zealand email. That was a mistake. So I just finished my class. It was on Zoom. Um, and during the Zoom, I checked my email just because it was open and another email come uh, came up. So it was the same one um, like as earlier that I showed you. But when I click on the link instead this time, it opens up a calendar and I'll show you that calendar right now. So here's the calendar and you can see over here on the left, there's like the dates that are in blue. So basically those are dates that are available. So 
The 9th, for example, is in Toronto, and so is the 10th. Um, both of those are in Toronto. I'm pretty sure that there was the 12th, which was in Montreal, I think, but now that one's full, so there's no more dates there. And then these, if you go here, this is Vancouver for the 14th and 15th. So I'm obviously close to Toronto, so I'm gonna pick one of these, but I'm gonna do the Tuesday because I have no class. So you can go down here, you can see that it has the interview windows, the presentation time, and where the location is for the interviews. A lot of them are already filling up, so I'm gonna pick mine, and my interview window will be two to 3 p.m. on that Tuesday, which I think is a good one for me. Um, I'm just gonna take a picture of this so that I know where the location is, but basically, there'll be like a presentation at 9.30 where they talk about the program, and then you just have to hang out and wait until your interview time. So mine will be 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., submit that, and I have here, it says my interview slot, and it's all confirmed, and it shows Tuesday, January 10th, which is next week. It's less than a week away, which is a very quick turnaround, which is kind of crazy. People thought February, and here we are a week later, gonna be doing my Disney Cultural Exchange interview. So I'm gonna vlog that day, it'll be fun. It's not at the Disney head office, it's at a hotel a conference center, so that'll still be cool, but I'm super excited about it. Um, and I'll of course update on future steps. But I wanted to share this other update because this happened while I was on my class and I kind of had a break. But I got two emails after I scheduled the interview and I wanted to show you those and go over those with you all. Um, because maybe some people who are watching this for the first time want to apply in the future. So I just wanted to document my whole journey. Who knows, let's see. But here's the first email and I'm gonna share it now because the interview will have already been done. So it doesn't really matter, but um, it says confirmation and then it shows where the interview is. So mine's gonna be in a Toronto. I'm excited that it's in person. Um, I really like when things are in person. It makes it more fun and I just think more personable. And then the second email that I got is one about uh, documents. And if you know anything about the Disney College program or the cultural exchange program, you know that they use a system called DOC and that's where you upload all of your stuff, like your passport, your proof of being a student, all those kind of things. So here's the email. So you can see that it says, we, we recommend you add the following information to the DOC prior to your interview. So I have to do this very soon. And it's a copy of my passport, which I have, it's all up to date. Copies of prior US visas, which I don't have any because I've never worked in the US before. And then another one is the completed proof of student status form, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna have to get this filled out right here by my school, which is cool. So I'm gonna have to print this off and I'm gonna have to bring this in and have them do it. And then just all of my address and all that kind of stuff. And it says that obviously if you're uh, given an offer that you would have to uh, have all this stuff put into the doc system. So it's cool that even though like you're waiting for the interview, they give you stuff to do. I feel like it makes it fun because it's like you're working towards those steps to get there. So I think that's pretty fun. And then I'll show you what happens when I click on the link. It took me obviously to the doc uh, sort of website login, which is right here for those that uh, don't know. Pretty cool. I've obviously never seen this before, but I will log in and we can see what that looks like. Alrighty, so I've logged in and this is what I see. So you can see there's the three things that I talked about there, the passport, the proof of student enrollment form, and then the candidate um, information form, which is probably all of my information. And then you can see over there, it says my name and then the program summer 2023, arrival date, not there yet. Hopefully I'll get one of those after the interview and I get accepted. So yeah, I just wanted to like kind of give updates and show my whole uh, process because I feel like it's helpful. I watch lots of vlogs on this program as well as the college program, just all those things for years because I've loved it and that's one of the big reasons why we started our YouTube channel was potentially maybe at some point in the future being able to do this. So if you're just first uh, joining us for the first time on this video, um, thank you and I appreciate you following along with my journey and if you've been with us for a while you know that I've wanted to do this for a little while so it's exciting that I get to do this um, so I'm gonna put all this stuff onto the doc uh, website obviously I'll get all that done and go to my school to get the form filled out and then the next stuff that you'll probably see is the interview vlog and I'll show as much as I can. I obviously can't show my interview and I probably can't show the presentation, but definitely follow us on Instagram at sunny times two and you'll be able to see updates there maybe from the day, but I'm super excited about it. So we shall catch you on the interview day. All right, today is the day of the interview and I'm just in the car. I'm actually using a new camera, the camera that we got for Christmas. So hopefully this looks good. I'm gonna try to play around with it and see how it looks. It's weird because the screen is over on this side, 
but then like the lens is here. So um, if I'm ever looking over there, it's because I'm looking at myself in the screen and make sure that it's good. But anyway, we are in uh, Toronto and I'm about to head to the interview. The presentation this morning is at 9.30. I'm trying to get there early at nine o'clock. So I paid for some parking right across from the hotel um, where the interview is being held at. So I'll go inside and I'll show you as much as I can. Like I said before, um, I'll talk about the interview questions and kind of what they showed in the presentation, um, but I'm excited. So let's go do this. presentation and I'll like leave some details here like I put little clips in of different stuff I tried to take some clips um, and I'll talk more about it once I kind of get home or back to the car but basically they went over like the housing costs and where you'd be living obviously the breakdown of that the different roles that they're offering right now so they're not offering like character I'm um, attendant or performer or those things for Canadian students right now so there's a few different roles and I'll kind of um, talk about them after but there's like food and beverage um, merchandise attractions, cedar, and that kind of stuff. So um, I'm just excited about it. I'm waiting here. I'm gonna edit a video, hang out and do some homework, and then I'll update you after the interview, talk about the questions that they asked, but the two recruiters are so nice. They're incredible and so funny. So I'm excited to have the interview and just talk with them and uh, see how it goes. All right, so we are back at home. I'm all settled in and I wanted to do a recap chat about everything. I want to share all the questions. I want to talk about all the roles. I want to talk about the day because if you were like me and you were um, applying for this, you wanted to know things and see things. So I hope that this video will help some people who are checking this out. If you're Canadian or some other um, international person who wants to do the cultural exchange program, or if you're a Disney college program person, I don't know. Hopefully this video is helpful. But basically I wrote down some notes um, I'll touch on them. I'm going to talk about each question, kind of like generally what I said, um, what the roles that they're offering this year are for first time um, applicants, who the recruiters were, all that kind of stuff. So let's get right on into it. So the recruiters that we had were Danielle and Roy, and they were so great and so awesome, so funny. And just honestly, like when you first met them, you knew that they worked for Disney and it was just so great to talk with them and get to know them a little bit. They shared uh, their stories. So... Um, Danielle worked in merch on the DCP for the first time and now she works in HR and does recruiting. So I thought that was just so, so cool. Um, and then Roy, he didn't do the DCP, but he's been with Disney for nine years. So they shared lots of cool stories, talked about the roles that they liked the best. Um, they did the presentation at 930. They both kind of jumped off each other. So uh, there was lots of information in there. I tried to put some clips in, but I can share all that stuff in a separate video when I hopefully get accepted. Um, and talk more about that kind of stuff, like the breakdown of the program. Um, but let's get into the roles that they offered this year. There were five roles, um, and they are quick service food and beverage, uh, merchandise, attractions, custodial, and a cedar. So basically what Danielle said was those are the roles we're offering this year. Um, and in the interview, we'd have to rank our top three and talk about each of them um, and kind of rank them in order, which one we want the most and why. Uh, that was one of the questions that we'll get to later. But those were the five roles this year for the Canadian Cultural Exchange Program. I think alumni might have been offered or will be offered like character attendant and that kind of stuff. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that when we got our role checklist, those were on there. And of course, if you uh, watch at the beginning of this video or you've been around for a little while, um, I would have loved to have been a character attendant. So Maybe if I get accepted this time, I'll come back for another program and we'll get to have that chance because I just think that role would be super, super awesome. Um, but yeah, those were the five that were offered this year. And then, so how the day kind of went was the presentation was at 9.30. They asked you to get there at nine o'clock. It was at the Intercontinental Hotel in Toronto. 
um, not at the Disney office, which I was kind of sad about because it would have been cool to go to the Disney office uh, that they have there, but um, it was at this hotel. It was really nice. It was in this like conference room and they did the presentation. And then after that was over, they started with interviews. And I think the interviews started at 11 and they went every hour there was a session. So 11 to 12 and uh, that sort of thing. Mine was at two o'clock. Um, but they said that they were ahead of schedule, so we actually had to come a bit earlier. So I just hung out there for the day. I did some homework, edited video, um, and chatted with a bunch of people, which was like my favorite part of the whole day was getting to chat with a bunch of Disney fans as well who want to do this program. Um, I had so many great conversations, met so many amazing people who I hopefully will be able to share this amazing program with. I'm so excited about that. Um, and that was the highlight of my day for sure. So now let's get into the questions. This is probably what everybody wants to know because um, I know that I would have liked to have known sort of things that they would ask. I am not usually nervous with interviews at all um, because I just kind of know that it's more of them wanting to get to know you as a person. Um, so I was excited about it. I couldn't wait to talk to the recruiter. I didn't know who we'd get. So they kind of, um, at your time slot, uh, Roy took half and then Danielle took half. So I ended up doing my um, interview with Danielle and she said not to be nervous because it was just gonna be a conversation or a chat, which made me feel good um, and it was fun to talk with her. So these are the questions that she asked and I'll do it in order. Uh, the first one that she asked was if I have a valid passport and of course I do. That's part of the requirements. You have to have a passport to be able to travel outside of the country as well as work for a company not in your country. You have to travel there. Um, so she asked about that and if I knew when my passport expired. So that was the very, very first question. And then she also asked if I had worked in the US before, um, which I have not. So I said, no, of course, but those were kind of the first two sort of housekeeping questions uh, that she got out of the way. And of course, when I went in, we, we uh, briefly chatted, uh, she introduced herself and so did I, and we kind of had little jokes. I had like my backpack and my bag and my water, and I kind of said, oh my gosh, like I'm so sorry that I have all this stuff. I'm carrying my whole life here with me today, hanging out here. And she's like, oh, don't worry. You wouldn't believe how many things that we have here today, so I can relate. So that was nice to kind of like break that ice with her and talk with her. Um, so after those kind of housekeeping questions, she asked why that I applied to the cultural exchange program and why now at this time in my life. Um, so for me, I kind of just talked about that after COVID, I changed my career path and I'm in a new program for school. And this program has been something that I've always wanted to do. Obviously, I love Disney, just like everybody probably watching this video or applying to the program. Um, so for me, it's just something that I've always wanted to do. Um, and I talked about that, that I have always wanted to do it. It never worked out. But now with my program, um, even though I'm older and I'm 27 and most people probably apply for this when they're younger, uh, for me, now is just the right time and I'm so excited about it. Um, and I couldn't wait to apply for the program. She then asked me what I'm studying in school, why that I'm studying that, if I like it, um, like in that kind of stuff, talking more about my background with school. So I'm taking um, advertising and marketing communications. Um, I'm in my first year of doing that. I love it so, so much. So we talked about that. I talked about why that I love it so far. Uh, and she kind of thought it was really cool. She said it's cool that it like relates to Disney in some sort of way, which was really, really nice. And I kind of talked about how I'm loving it so far. I've met lots of cool people um, and it's been a really creative and exciting program for me to take. She then asked what I do for work, um, if I work while I'm in school. And of course, those who watch her videos know that I do. I work in childcare. Um, I have for almost 10 years, whether it be coaching sports or working at summer camps or a daycare, um, all that kind of stuff, running, uh, youth programming, all those sorts of things. So I talked about currently that I work at a child care center. Uh, we talked about that. She asked me how I like it, what age groups I work with. So I talked about toddler to grade eight, all that kind of stuff. It was a really, really good conversation. Um, she made, of course, comments how I'm very tall and it must be funny working with little kids. So that was really, really fun. Um, and we just kind of talked about that for a little bit. She then asked me something I think that kind of played off my work um, experience. And she asked a time that I made a difference in my job. Uh, whether it be with a kid or a family. So I just kind of touched on how uh, when I work with kids, I try to make a little bit of magic for them and just make their day or find things that interest them. Um, and I've just always had good conversations with parents and the kids and just like trying to find stuff that interests them or that they love and trying to just be relatable um, and be someone who the kids can connect with and talk to. Um, so I just kind of touched on all those things um, and it was a really, really good conversation. Then she got right into it and she asked what my top three roles would be 
and why. And of course, like I said before, going into this, character attendant would have been my number one. Um, so I kind of just had to do a reshuffling. So what I said for number one was merchandise. And I talked about how every time that I've had a good interaction at Disney, it makes me just want to work at Disney. And I've had a lot of good conversations and interactions with people who work in merchandise, whether it be pin trading or just asking how your day is or noticing things that you're wearing. I just think that merchandise has a unique opportunity where you can really connect with the guests. And I think that is just something that I would love to do. So we touched on that. I talked about that. Um, and then I talked about my second choice, which was attractions. I said sort of the same reason you can really connect with people on a story that they love or be a part of, um, of that storytelling. Um, so I thought that was cool. And then I talked about um, number three would be a cedar because I think that's also cool. You could talk with guests and kind of have that interaction. So I ranked those in order merchandise, attractions, and a cedar. And then she asked what my favorite attraction or attractions are. And I thought that was a fun question. So of course, I talked about Cosmic Rewind, which is my absolute favorite. It's the best ride, in my opinion, at Walt Disney World. Um, and we just kind of talked about that and she smiled and loved that. Um, and then I also said honorable mention to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway because that's a ride that I just love. It's so Disney and so cute. And she said that she always has to smile on that ride. And I said, uh, so do I, I love it so much. So we kind of talked about attractions for a little bit back and forth. And then she talked about uh, living with roommates, if I can handle that, if I've done that before. So of course I live with Heidi, who's my fiance here. Uh, those who know, um, have been around our channel, you know that if you're new, maybe you don't know that, but um, we live together. So uh, living with roommates is nothing new to me. And there I also touched on that I'm excited about potentially living with people from other cultures in different places around the world. And how I just think that would be a super, super cool, unique experience that um, only this program can really offer. And then the final things at the end, she asked if I have any questions for her or about the program. Um, I always think it's good to come prepared with a question or two to ask anybody who's interviewing you. So I wanted to know from her what she loves about working for Disney and if there's any um, highlight moments that have stuck out. So she just like touched on that she was uh, celebrating 12 years working with Disney. So for the 10 year, they do like a thing for you and it's kind of like a party with other people that are celebrating their 10 years. So I thought that was really awesome. Um, um, so she talked about that. She talked about how she got to be a part of the cruise that opened up uh, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and Cosmic Rewind. So I thought that was awesome. But then she said her favorite part um, of her journey with Disney is the role that she's in now, which is in uh, recruiting and being able to find the next people that will be able to spread magic for Disney. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and she just like lit up when she talked about it, which makes me excited about uh, potentially working for Disney, of course. And then lastly, she talked about next steps and she shared that, of course, if I was selected, that uh, we would hear on January 23rd at the latest, like around that time, um, which was cool. That's a pretty quick turnaround, a couple weeks. She said she still has to do the other interviews, of course, in the other Canadian locations, as well as the alumni interviews. Um, and then she talked about that you'd receive emails about um, obviously like your visa and housing and all that stuff, like when the timelines happen um, and that you'd have to do some different things to prepare obviously to work for Disney. Um, and she said that she's excited about hopefully having me there in May, which was really great. I thought the interview was so awesome. It, um, it went so great talking to other people there. I think that their interviews also went great, which makes me excited about it. Um, I think it was just more of a conversation, like I said, to get to know you. Um, and she left me feeling really, really good uh, when I left that room, which makes me feel happy and just so excited about uh, the potential of working for Disney this summer. So with that, I'm gonna end this video. That's everything that I have for you here today. Um, this video might be a little bit uh, lengthy, so I apologize, but I wanted to show this whole process and talk about the interview and show filling out the role checklist and all that kind of stuff um, because hopefully this is something that's helpful for you if you're watching this and you wanna apply next year or if you're one of the fellow people that applied with me for 2023, hello and welcome if you stumbled across this. Um, and if not, and you're just watching this video because you're one of our subscribers that have been here for a while, um, or you're just new and joining us, um, and you just wanna follow along with this journey, I just appreciate it so, so much, honestly, and all of the love and support that you all show us and myself all the time just um, always amazes me, and I just can't, uh, thank you enough. It it just really, really means the world. So hopefully this is the first step in an exciting journey with more cultural exchange Disney content to come. Um, and I think the next video related to this would be if I got accepted. So 
let's cross our fingers, let's hope and put it out there in the universe, but I just thank you all so much, and if you're just joining us for the first time, be sure to consider subscribing for more Disney content just like this for the Cultural Exchange Program, pins, hauls, vlogs, unboxings, live streams, all that fun stuff, um, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, and be sure to ring that bell so you never ever miss any new videos from us, and remember, now that Heidi's not sitting with me, I have to do this, but it is always sunny, my friends. Thank you.